Hi everybody. Right, so let's try this again, shall we? Oops. Um, so that was Chris's slightly red, slightly anxiety. Slightly face. sweaty face. Um, right, as you can see, I'm not a sugar and crumb. Um, this is, this is coming to you, this is the Sugar and Crumbs broadcast. Um, Carol's not very well, she's lost her voice. Uh, so we're going to have a, a quiet session today, you see. Um, so rather than me driving all the way up to Stockport from more or less London and risking getting ill, um, we're doing it from... Well, Where are we? The Immaculate Confection Studio, <laughs> such as it is. Um, our house in, uh, in, on the Heart Sussex borders. So yes, welcome. And for anybody that was here before, again, our apologies for the slight difference. Uh, technical difficulties, as as, uh, as Elaine said, you just cannot get the stuff. Um, speaking of which, I need to give thanks now. So, well, Carol and the team for having me on again and, and for doing it in this way. It's, it's definitely made life easier. Um, we have got Christopher. Who Hello. Is my husband, as you know. You've um, already seen me. Yeah, I've seen him. Um, our friend Curtis. Oh, okay. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> who I've known since he was an awkward teenager and has now grown into a lovely young man. Have to say, uh, even though that makes me sound like his mother. She has to say it because um, she had to say something nice about you. I did, exactly. yeah. We, we had a conversation. <laughs> <Name before. laughs> um, and Sophie, who I've known since she was born that long, in fact. That long! That long. Oh my um, goodness. So, yeah, and she's, she's you know, fa friends that become family. Uh, we got, Chris and I got married in her parents' back garden. Uh, seven, well, it'll be seven years next Sunday, is our wedding anniversary. So, you know, time flies out. Long time. Quick reminder, um, Chris. Yeah, no, I'd forgotten, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> So yes, Carol is with us. She is uh, she's online and she will be commenting and assisting as she can. Um, but I am otherwise on my Larry, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I'm going to try not get too emotional and not burst too far into tears again. It's fine. Lots of comments from everybody. Give her things to talk about. Me. Give yeah, me you. To talk about. Yeah, comments. People need to make comments oh, yeah, to give sure, you yeah, things yeah, to yeah, talk no, about. If you've got questions and stuff, then that's cool. And yeah, seriously, guys, bear with us because like we're newbies at this. We are absolutely doing our best. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit different. Um, right, so, hopefully you can see before you, assuming that the camera is, is, is doing Who this. knows? <laughs> um, three cakes. These are the ones that are in my book, which uh, it brings me massive amounts of joy and pleasure to say is finally with us. They've arrived from the printers, and we have had a busy couple of days sending them out. Um, it has been, to say the least, completely overwhelming, the support and well wishes and how many orders there have been, like from all over the world, it's insane and I can't believe it and it blows my tiny little mind that there's that many of you guys that are kind of supporting this mad journey into cakes that we're on, so thank you, from the very bottom of our hearts, thank you very, very much and somehow I managed to make it through that without weeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, what we're going to do today is just have a little look through it. I'm going to show you some bits and bobs, and um, yeah, hope, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So they're, they're for sale on Carol's website, on Sugar and Crumbs, of course, um, wherein you will also find um, the Rapid Rose and Perfect Peony products of mine. Um, they're also for sale on my website, and in terms of like colours and stuff that we're going to be looking at, of course, you can get all of those on Sugar and Crumbs as well. Um, I would imagine at some point... We will make a wish list, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is Chris is looking at me with a very peculiar I'm not face. What you're talking about. Sugar and crumbs thing. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'll email Maria about that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, so these are, um, so yes, book, right, okay. Compose yourself. Compose yourself. Organize your thoughts. The book has got, um, it's sugar flowers, as you might have guessed. Um, and at the end of the book, there are three projects, and it guides you step by step through making them. Um, these are those three cakes. There's a little one tier, the two tier, and the three tier one. Um, different colour combos, but of course you can use the designs with any combination of colours and stuff. And um, yes, there's three of these here. Do we have a question? We do. We definitely do. I had a question from an interested viewer asking about the turquoise cake behind you, actually. And oh, <laughs> where you bought the colour from? Oh, okay. There's, there's always questions on that. So um, this one, I, I colour the fondant myself. Um, it's it's 
blue and or purple fondant that I buy to get me started and then a whole ton of uh, navy food colouring, normally rainbow dust. Uh, this particular design, this is, this is a really nice segue, so thanks that viewer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is one of the ones that I teach and I've got it coming up uh, at a variety of venues in uh, September and October. I'm up with Carol teaching it at, Sugar, at the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen in September. Um, if you go onto Carol's website or in or my website, you'll be able to see the dates and sign up and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's the that's that one. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> and lots of lovely comments about receiving the book, not being able to put it down, Aww. and studying rather than oh, studying yeah, it. So. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'll move these out of the way. But th these are the these are the projects that are in there. Um, they're cool. I think this one's my favourite. There's something about the I don't know, the blue and the yellow. I really like it. So I'm going to move them over here, hopefully not drop them. <laughs> so bear with just a moment. Okay. I'm sure people would agree that moving wedding cakes is awful. Well, you've done a fair right. bit of that, haven't you? So the video is going a little bit blurry. Oh, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> Which one? Uh, bo are both of them doing it. Um, we're just getting comments on the sugar and crumbs on one. On the sugar and crumbs one, why would that be happening? Picture is struggling a bit, says Jackie. Right. Now you see, the thing is that we live precisely 26 miles outside of central London. You can get to central London on a train in like, what, 25 minutes? Yeah, is that? Despite that fact, mm. our village doesn't have fibre optic broadband, mm. <laughs> would you believe? And we are classed as rural. Now, I know I, I have lots of cakey friends who live in actually rural places, like, you know, in the hills in Scotland and valleys in Wales. And yet, despite being 25 miles outside of London, we suffer from that problem. Um, I was going to say, Lynn's fine, so... Okay. Lynn's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Good for Lynn. Oh, God, guys, just bear with us. I'm sorry. This and is... Sharon also says it's clear. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully... Mm. Fingers crossed it will sort its life out and, you know, we'll see. Um, okay, so back to me and my book then. Back to me. <laughs> um, right, so this is it. There is, I'm going to whiz you through um, some of the chapters. Oh, so look, so this is my favourite picture in the whole book. <laughs> 140 pages. This is the one that I love. Uh, just because it's blue, I have a thing for blue. Um, there is uh, the very first chapter, um, The Basics. It is all about um, the tools you need, the colours you can use, the different kinds of pastes there are. Um, there's a little explanation of all the different tools and how you use them and what bits of kit you need. So if, if you are relatively new to sugar flowers, then this hopefully will be really helpful in sort of getting you going. So that's kind of your first bit. And um, there's so many pictures in this book, man. I took every single one of them pretty much. There are so many pictures. Like we've got how to colour flower paste. Um, what to do if it goes wrong, using various tools, how to sort of um, insert wires into your leaves and stuff, lots of things. Um, then we've got a chapter on colour, which I'm going to whiz past because we are coming back to that because, as you know, I am obsessed with, with all things colourful. Um, you can see there's lots of colour. <laughs> Makes me happy. Um, okay, roses. There had to be roses, of course. Uh, roses and my little rapid rose gadget is where all of this started. So there is lots on that and there is full of uh, hints and tips. All these like little handwriting bits you see are the bits that have kind of come out of my brain in a uh, chatty fashion, shall we say. They're not, like, it's not textbooky. It's a uh, it's a help you on your way and, and kind of get the job done thing. Um, peonies, of course, which are just glorious things. So there's lots on that. And again, all the bits you need. Um, filler flowers. Lots of people have asked about these because the filler flowers are the lovely, fun little bits that will just bring your work to life and stuff. So there's, um, what have we got? I think there's three or four different kinds of filler flowers in there, as you can see. Um, how to use a Mexican hat pad to make them. So it's full of different stuff. Um, there are leaves. So again, three kinds of leaves from your sort of basic, straightforward rose leaf. Um, how to make these little leafy branches, which are just wonderful little things to design with. Um, peony leaves and the kind of the 
the sort of hack that I use to make them easier. Um, and then buds and berries. This is my second favourite picture in the whole book. Um, actually, no, there's one that is more of a favourite, but anyway, uh, we'll come to that. Yeah, buds and berries, wonderful little bits. Excellent opportunity to add just a little pop of colour. They're so quick to make. There's um, some hints and tips and tricks on how to do them dead quick. And uh, yeah, they can, again, another thing that can just transform your work. Um, and then beyond that, you've got the three projects. And what I've tried to do with this, and this is something that has wound me up for a long time, there's nothing worse than you get a new book and you're all excited and it will say, like, use the ball tool to soften the edges. Well, what's a ball tool? How do I use it? And what on earth do you mean, soften the edges? So the whole point with this is it explains those things as you go along. So it's not just teaching you how to make this flower in that colour or that flower in this colour. It is giving you sort of the skills and the, what's the word I'm looking for, like the grounding to, to learn these bits and then go and do more. Um, so with that in mind, for each project, you've got sort of a clear list of the bits and bobs you need to make to do it. You've got a guide on the colours, how to dust them and what they should look like when they're dusted, and then these step-by-step -step pictures of placing them on the cake, showing you how you build the design up, adding the different flowers, the leaves and so on. Um, and again, this one, like I said, this one's my favourite. Definitely love this one. Um, same thing with all the colours, and then we've got um, yeah that one at the end. And of course, there's nothing stopping you taking the the colours from this project and applying them to the design on that cake. So it's also you know it's going to encourage you to experiment and and do things as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that is everything that's in there. Um, like I said, available to buy now at long last. I'm pleased to say. Um, Sugar and Crumbs website or on our website, either is good and um, oh yeah I hope you like it. Actually we've had some lovely feedback from folks that have received them today and everyone else that's ordered from us they've gone out today so you'll have them tomorrow and I know that uh, the Sugar and Crumbs ones arrived to their warehouse this morning so again those that have gone out today so yeah I'm super excited. Um, drop me a line let me know what you think be it the email, Facebook, whatever you fancy because you know we love hearing from people. It brings me joy. Pictures of things you make as well. And pictures, yes. Send us pictures. Love seeing pictures. It is on our to-do list to be better at sharing them and stuff because it's just awesome seeing the things. Do Quick the question yes. from our Immaculate Confections um, stream. Is the tools you describe in the book, do you sell all of them or is there somewhere else that you would recommend getting them, the various tools you describe? Um, we sell some of them, but certainly Sugar and Crumbs sell them all. So anything you see on there, you'll be able to get on their website as well. Um, some of them are a bit specific, some of them are more general bits. And again, it encourages you to, like, say you've got, um, I don't know, a, a, a leaf cutter from one company, but the book uses one from a different company. Like, go with your leaves, it's fine. Um, part of it is, is saying, and this is actually this is what we're going to do this evening, is saying that um, colour is the most important thing. That is my belief through and through and through. It's at times a little controversial, but that's good, that's how I like to roll. Um, you can have something that is uh, a little bit ropey in terms of technical skill, um, or something that's got the odd lump and bump, like it happens to us, all those things that you obsess over and you can see, like no one else is gonna know this, but you can see the problems. Um, you can have anything like that, flowers that are not, strictly speaking, botanically correct. Uh, if your colors are right, the cake will look amazing colour is just so important so if you've got a leaf like that but not like this go with the leaves you know it's not strictly necessary to go and buy a whole new load of kit to be able to to um, produce what's in the book um, so yeah we're gonna talk about colour do we have any other questions or anything it doesn't matter where from um, um, we've got a couple of reports that actually the immaculate confection stream is better than the <laughs> um, <laughs> crumbs stream so if anyone's struggling on sugar and crumbs right. A recommendation would be to pop over. Okay, we can do that. But equally, guys, it should sort itself out. If you okay, this is, is it fuzzy, Chris? Is your is your camera lens clean? Like, is that no, it's thing? it's not that. It's not that. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's not that. For which, guys, we can only apologise. Like I said, bear with us. We're doing our best, and we will. Like next time, I will be going to Stockport because that has to be easier <laughs> than trying to do it ourselves. 
Um, so yeah, just bear with us. Um, right, colour. There is, so you will find it in here. Um, like I said, colour, super important, amazing thing. It will change everything you do, hands down. It will transform what you do. Um, in here, we go through the colour wheel, because understanding that is really important. And then there is a whole bit about how to mix colours. And I've used green as an example because it's one of my favourites. And it's just, it's a very practical colour to learn how to mix. Tell us an interesting fact about green. Oh, okay. So this is Chris's fact. This fact made it into the book, yeah. um, which he was delighted about. <coughs> um, so human beings, we've got, how, how your eyes work, you've got... Um, Cones, they're called. Cones and rods, but like the little cells in the back of your eye on your retina that pick up colours. Um, humans can see more green than any other colour. Uh, which... And why is that? And why is that? Why is it, Christopher? <laughs> I can't remember that. <laughs> no, it's because we, uh, there are so many different greens, we need to di differentiate them to um, identify predators. That's it, yeah. Because, you know, the, traditionally humans back in the day would have been in places with a heck of a lot more vegetation than what we live in now. Um, so, so you can see them. So yeah, you can you can di differentiate an awful lot more colours of green than that. And it's also because green's in the middle of the spectrum in terms of light values and things, whereas red's at one end and you've got ultraviolet purple at the other. Green's in the middle. Anyway, fun fact about green. So in here, there's... Um, yeah, it, it goes through how to make greens from all of the sort of bright, super limey colours um, darker greens, olive greens, vintage greens, and the, the, the point of this is that the principles here you can apply to any colour, and certainly with colours the best thing you can do is experiment. So there's loads, loads on that, and then um, some other favourite colours for sugar flowers and how to make them. Another little note here, and it does say it in the book, I've listed all the colours just so that you know when you've got them there. Again, don't feel like you have to use it. If you've got a different brand of burgundy than colour splash, go with it, it will be fine. If, if you learn the principles of mixing colours and using them, the brand becomes less important uh, because you are understanding what you're doing as opposed to sort of just copying the thing. So there's all of that and then a lot of stuff on um, colour relationships. So that's how choosing which colours to use together and in what context and all the rest of it. <coughs> So there's plenty on that, and then I don't know if she's watching, but she might be. Uh, so my sister's wedding cake's in the book, which is kind of cool for her. I don't know if she is. Um, so yes, colour. I'm going to leave this here, and I will show you uh, some bits. So uh, everybody knows what the colour wheel is, right? Does, does the room know what the colour wheel is, or is this going to be? It's a wheel of yeah. colour. <laughs> Christian wheel though, because he lives with me. <laughs> um, <coughs> right, traditionally you get this one. So what you have got here is red, yellow and blue and the idea is that you can mix those colours to make all the other ones. Now you can to a point. Um, you will see that here it sort of falls apart a little bit and that the, the, the purples aren't quite as purple as we would like them to be. Um, this was painted with food colours because I am nothing if not pedantic and tenacious, and I was determined to prove a point about this. So I did sit and water them down with a bit of uh, alcohol and, and paint them all. So this one, traditional red, blue, and yellow. This one, which is by far the better one, uses yellow, magenta, and cyan. Now, if you think about your printer, the inks come with CYM and then K. So the K is for black, but CYM is cyan, yellow, and magenta. Um, as it happens, printing companies and printer manufacturers know what they're talking about. You get much better colours off this model. You've still got your proper red and your proper blues, but you've also got that wonderful bright tealy sky blue colour, and you've got all your strong magentas and things. So basically, this one, no likey, this one, much better. Hold them up side by side. Like this. So, this hand, what's this? This is my right hand, <laughs> <laughs> which would be, oh God, and Facebook flips videos as well. So that means that all the things in the book would have been back to front. Oh, I'm really sorry. Um, anyway, this hand here, the one that's bobbing, I can't do the left and right thing. 
no good this one way better um so in terms of figuring out your colour mixing and stuff go for your cym much 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 better um there is some prodding going on in the room uh, want to try and ditch our Okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to try and use my 4G. Right, you should just be able to switch it on. I'm just going to switch off the Wi-Fi. So bear with us, folks. Anyone saying anything encouraging? We're there? back we on. a lot of encouraging comments. Okay, People are loving it. So please come back to us over at Sugar and Crumbs. Yes, do. Yeah, the stream should be back up and good on Sugar and Crumbs. So head over there. Yeah, yeah okay, right, good. this is making better. Yeah. Grand. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so we're back on doing good with sugar and crumbs. So hopefully that's all all up and running. Again, I can only apologise that we have had the problems that we have had. Um, where were we? We were talking colour, weren't we? So yeah, not this one, but be like this one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave this one turned up. So the idea with the colour wheel is, let's say, for example, that you've got a design and you want to use a lime green, but you haven't got a lime green colour to hand. Um, you can look at your wheel and see where the lime green is. So it's sort of here-ish and you can see that it's sort of it's got more yellow in it than it has green and blue. So you could take green, add some yellow and you're going to come up with a lime on it there. Um, similarly if you were trying to make a sort of plummy purple you can see that the plum sort of purple is going to sit closer to the pink so you want to mix a purple that's got more pink in it than it has blue um, that's the principle that you can use to mix it all the way around is everything working on the stream yeah yeah no yeah. the pictures yeah fantastic oh yeah. guys i'm so sorry let's seriously next time i will go up to carol's <laughs> for sure <laughs> um so that's that's the principles of your color wheels Again, there's loads of stuff to do with that in the book. Um, this is your next bit, right? So this is about oh, how to combine colours because it's one thing mixing them, it's a whole other thing than how you use them on a cake. Um, colour theory gives you that you, you have, they, they call them complementary pairs and I always think that's a little bit of a weird thing to call it. Um, so I go for the word contrast, because really what it generates is contrast. You've got yellow and purple, red and green, blue and orange. And you can see from these, and again, all of this is in the book, um, that they're more or less opposites, and those are colours that are going to look particularly bright and particularly bold when they're sat next to each other. Um, so I made a few examples, and I'm going to try and hold them up so that you can see them. What did we say? We started with yellow and purple, right? So the important thing here, and this is where your colour mixing comes in, is that you can use variations of a colour to make a subtler combination, subtler combination and more interesting tones than if you use like the primary shades. So this one here, which hopefully you can see, can you see it? Is it alright? There we go. Can't get the stuff, like we said. So this, obviously it's purple and gold, um, but because you've got the gold is a kind of yellow, obviously, and we've gone for a really deep sort of bluish purplish, uh, bluish purplish purple. <laughs> Goodness me, like a deep rich purple there, and it just it looks so much cooler than if you had bright Cadbury purple and like sun yellow. So tweaking those colours makes it look really cool. Um, blue and orange is the next one, so that would be so. Of these sorts of colours and those sorts of colours there. But again, if you tweak it so that you've got a slightly soft golden orange with this sort of darker orange here and that navy blue, it looks so much nicer than if you just had blunt orange and blunt blue even. And then for red and green, now of course red and green is a bit special and it gets a special mention in the book for two reasons. Um, the first one is that you see it all the time in nature, like so many flowers are sort of reds, oranges and pinks, those kind of red colours, always paired with a green leaf, so we're used to seeing it. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is Christmas. Like, everything in Christmas is bright red and green. So that one's a little bit special. But even that, 
you can tweak. So that one there, you've got that lovely bright sort of magenta -y pink um, in combination with the lime green and it just pops and looks awesome. And the trick there is having that lime green. If that pink was sat next to a much darker green, in fact, let, let me use my thing there. I hope you guys can see this. It's just not the same. So again, it's all about tweaking the colours you've got and using them so that they are all displayed to their kind of best effects and stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that's a little whiz round colour theory. Um, now, can anyone tell me what the time is? It is. Half eight. Half eight. Oh, okay, that's cool. Well, we've got bags of time. Um, all right, so look, I'm going to stop like talking at you now and we'll do something. That's my happy place is the doing. The presenting is harder. I really do wish I had Carol here because she pulls it off perfectly. Me, not so much. And again, apology for technical difficulties and so on and so forth. We are doing our best. Um, in fact, let's have a little interlude. I have notices. It's like having um, an ADM. Um, Right, so Facebook Lives, of course, Sugar and Crumbs, always, every Monday without fail. Um, 20th of May, we've got Anna Ramigo coming in from Cupcakes and Dreams. Um, I've met that lady, she is very lovely indeed, and her work is amazing. Um, she's going to be coming in, demonstrating for you, uh, we'll be using the Graduate Kiss, so make sure you tune in on the 20th for that. Um, this is where it becomes amusing, so uh, I was down for Tuesday the 28th. Not the 27th, uh, <laughs> because that's a Monday and it's a bank holiday, but Tuesday the 28th. Uh, I'm going to talk to Carol about that, and with any luck, you'll see me then again with a slightly more uh, professional air to things than we've had this evening. Um, 4th of June, the lovely Marion Frost from Patchwork Cutters will be on with Carol. Um, and then on Tuesday, there's a special morning session uh, working with Renshaw. Um, and we've got Reva Alexander Hawk um, going on there to do some demonstrations as well. So make sure you guys tune in and put those ones in your calendar. Um, the lives they've booked up till October. They're always great. Carol gets such a fantastic um, range of people on them doing all sorts of different things. So make sure you keep tuning in. Um, and yeah, those are the ones that are coming up. And I will also say, should I could have said this earlier. So we're running a wee little competition this evening as well, which is for the folk who, uh, so all you've got to do is like, like and share the stream, so what we're doing now, like it and share it, um, and you will be on the receiving end of um, our new bits, which are, throw them across the desk, um, a kettle pad, so as you can see, it is a firm foam pad that you're going to use with the ball tools and stuff, and it's got the holes for a Mexican hat. Um, I love this thing, it is so simple, it, it, it does the job and it's pretty, like it just looks cool, so there'll be one of these. Um, and then some dusting brushes, because I went off and uh, specifically sourced some brushes that are just perfect for dusting, and the thing about these that just brings me absolute joy is that if you look closely, they've got our name on them, they say Immaculate Confections, how cool is that? Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, that is the prize. And like I said, all you have to do, like and share the Sugar and Crumbs stream, and um, names in a hat, usual thing. Now, I am going to have to, in just a moment, go and find the winner for last week's one, which I will do in just a minute, guys. We're going to announce that at the end. Um, right. This is going to be a very brief break, so I'm going to ask a question and then I'm going to disappear for just one second. Um, the question is that I have got cake dummies because uh, my plan was that we would um, wire and tape some bits together and I'll show you that side of things. So shall I make the rose for it? Because I know a lot of us have seen this before. What do you reckon? Shall I make us a quick rose to go on this cake or I can use ones that I've already got? Let us know in the comments, and I'm going to return in about two seconds. Mm -hmm. okay. We're still... What are you looking for? Okay, 
In fact, I'm really sorry about that. The reason I went is because we have got the winner of last week's competition, who has won the Fay Cahill Dusts. Now, those dusts are fantastic. Um, I would quite happily have won those myself, but I didn't. And it is Nesma Saeed Khan. So congratulations to Nesma. They will be on their way to you. And um, yeah, pop us on, uh, pop on and, and, and let us know that you've got them. And uh, very many congratulations for it. Okay, so guys, Sophie, are we going? We're going. Yeah, with we're the going with the rose. We're getting a oh, lot of positives for making the rose. Okay. Um. So, all right. Back to my happy place where I know what I'm talking about. Mm. So I was hoping you would say yes because I have a colour scheme plan and everything now. Just. Out a bit of We've paper. got it's, it's a little bit blurry still. Really apologise, guys. It's the awfulness of uh, our internet um, and even apparently my 4G. Maybe it's your phone. Yeah, because we're not having the issues. So, immaculate confections, viewers. How's it looking? Because I might pretty, be able to. Pretty positive. We're, we're getting. Ups and downs on the on, on, the, on both of them. Yeah, yeah. I think so. guys, it's our internet. Honestly, like we moved house last summer, <clears> and it's just the village we were in now has fibre optic. This one doesn't. It's got terrible phone signal, which running a business drives me absolutely potty because it's like a house from a horror film. It doesn't want me to contact the outside world sometimes, and I can only apologise. And uh, yeah, really sorry. Um, right. If you guys want to zoom in a little bit, we're going we'll to come start in. off with a sketch. Now, the book talks about this, and in fact, look, you know that blue and yellow one I showed you at the start that's one of the projects that's my favourite? Here's how it came to life. I wasn't sure what colours it was, so I literally drew it three times, coloured it in, and thus I was like, do you know what? This is the one here. So sketching is so important. Um, you do not need to be a master artist, not by a long shot. And we've got our dummies, which are just little two tiers. So there's our cake. We're going to put a rose on it and we'll have a nice big one so he can live there. And I know I've got, because it's like I planned this, <laughs> which I did actually for once, we've got some filler flowers and I know we've got some nice big leaves so we can put those in. And I've got some leaves on a little branch. So you see, you can start to get a feel for the shape. Because design, for anything, it, it's colour and shape. And it's about getting the right things in the right place in terms of colour and shape. Um, so we've got those. I'm going to add in a few little berries. Here, let in a cake board. Because I always think they look strange if you've not got a cake board at the bottom. And you can see, it doesn't have to be a super complicated thing or a work of art. It is just a... A guide for you on how to do it um, and then I have got some pencils and these like you can see they're the same Crayolas that I've had since I was at school uh, so we've had them for a little while now Irish Shuttleworth says it may be blurry but you're shining through it Natalie oh, Iris you're so sweet thanks Iris um, oh that's kind of you because yeah this is slightly nerve-wracking <laughs> um, so you can see, we're going in with some greens. And we can put some greens on some of those bigger leaves as well. But I think that those ones maybe should be a little bit darker because things are always going to look more interesting if you use toning colours. So instead of just having one green, one pink, one orange, you go for a variety. Because that's how it is in nature. Nothing in nature is just one single colour. Quick question um, from Elaine Lawton. Yes. She says she has problems keeping her leaves on the wires. Any tips? Uh, yes. So make sure that you um, wet the end of the wire, a little bit of water or even a, a wee dip in some edible glue. And once you've put the wire in the leaf, pinch the end shut. It's important that you do that little pinch. It's just like it's a little squeeze. Let's see if... Uh, Okay, you may not be able to see this, <laughs> but you can see on the back of that one there, it's literally, so I've inserted the wire and you just squeeze it and just give it a little twist. And that is not going to go anywhere. 
Um, the other thing you can do is make sure that you like leave them to dry overnight rather than trying to use them straight away. Because the thing with leaves or wired petals is that if you if you try and use them too soon and you sort of break the seal and they start spinning on the wires, they'll kind of spin forever. So yeah, nice pinch and leave them overnight should sort it out for you. Um, what were we doing? We were sketching. We were sketching. Right? We were sketching. So we've got some pinks in there. And again, we know we had a nice bright pink. I knew I was going to go for bright pink, which is why I wanted those brighter greens, as you can see. And then I reckon that we are going to go for a sort of corally type um, flower, just because they're, they're lovely. I was teaching on Monday um, a rose class, and there was a lady there that did these ones. It was, now what was it? It was rainbow dust poppy was the colour but just a little smidgen of it and it came out as the most fantastic coral and it sort of inspired me to want to go and do something like that so this this bit that I'm doing now with this pink around the edge that's what I uh, hope my petal dusts are going to do so they'll lighten it up just a little bit and then I think I've got some really really bright green on the seat there it is. Hang on, I can just turn it around for a second. But yeah, so you can see it's not like it is by no stretch of the imagination a work of art, but it just gives you a little bit of an idea of um, what sort of shapes you want to create, roughly how they're going to sit on the cake in terms of the tears and stuff. Um, and then you can play with the colours. And if you weren't 100% on this, just draw it again. Um, have a pot with another different set of colours. So this, if I can work quick enough, is what we're gonna what we're gonna produce. Um, right, Let's get right in way. on there. So that's what you're gonna try and do now. Yes, that's what we're gonna make on my uncovered dummy cakes because you know, actually, do you know what? I would have covered them, but Chris and I, God bless him, we spent all day packing up and shipping orders, which is awesome. Um, and thank you again, thank you all. Um, so yeah, we'll have to go with, with uncovered dummies, but the principle is exactly the same. Um, right, so, flower paste. Um, I tend to use Squire's flower paste, but you could go, uh, Renshaw's do it, and Sarashino make one, and Carol's got a lovely new one in called Pasta de Flores, I think it is. Um, a couple of questions. Natalie, will you be doing any classes in South London in the future? Please say yes. Um, South London. I don't have a venue in South London, but if you know of one, then by all means, um, let me know. Also, a little bit of sort of selfless, shameless um, uh, self-promotion here. Um, this, so this, this is my, this is the cake room, or the cake studio on days that we're feeling fancy. Um, like I said, we moved in the summer and um, there was this extra room in the house. Um, I teach private lessons from home. Um, we are just north of London. We're about 25 minutes on the train from uh, Liverpool Street in central London. Um, so I'll try and find somewhere in south London or indeed, drop me an email. You are welcome to come to me. And is there a distributor for the book in Abu Dhabi? Uh, no, there is not. <laughs> Um, however, between myself and Sugar and Crumbs, we can ship worldwide. If you want to pop me an email, I can have a look at what the shipping would be in advance, and um, I'm sure we can get one over to you. Or ask the guys at Sugar and Crumbs. Yeah, either way. Either way. Right, okay, so flower paste. That was a little bit of petal base. Um, petal base is basically uh, it's glorified vegetable fat. Um, I like to use this stuff uh, for no reason other than it's vanilla scented um, and therefore it's not quite, so I don't know why I just smell it, just to prove it. Um, <laughs> so it's not quite as gross as sort of putting treks on your hands, but it is still a little bit gross. But it will make your hands nice and soft. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to find that on Carol's website on Sugar and Crumbs. Um, nicely kneaded flour paste. You want to knead it really, really well. And you can see how wonderfully stretchy it goes. And it's that stretchiness that is gonna let you roll it really thin um, so that you can make nice flowers, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we're going to color it. Um, color Splash Orange, one of my favorites. If we use just a little bit, you're gonna come out 
Well, it might be a bit much, hang on. We're going to come out with a lovely peachy colour. Just a note for Martina. Yes, we are quite near Stansden. Oh, yeah, like... Half oh, hour. Half an hour. If that. Yeah. God, I've only lived in my whole life. Yeah, about <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> so look, hopefully you guys can see that it is going a lovely um, pale peach there. So I do want it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more colour in. And the trick with colour, and I always say this in person, I've said it in the book at least a thousand times, I think, is add just a little bit because you can always add more, but once it's there, you can't take it away. So little by little, and we'll get the colour that we want. Now, that's about there, and I'm going to add a little bit of pink in. Just here. And this one, it's Colour Splash Raspberry. And again, all of these bits you can get on the Sugar and Crumbs website. Um, we will build you a wish list. But equally, if you're after anything else, you can just go and search in the in the bar at the top of the page and you'll be able to find all these bits. And can you see, having put that pink in, it's gone that lovely corally colour because you're starting to get there. Because, let's grab the, the colour wheel. So your coral is somewhere here. It's sort of in between pink and orange. So by adding the pink into that orange, you start to approach a coral. And I think... Actually, I'm feeling a bit bright this evening. So let's go for just a little bit more of the pink. Oh, that was maybe too much, so we're going to have to go for some more orange. Bear with me, guys. What were you saying about being careful about colours? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's the it's the the, 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 the pressure of a of a life situation. <laughs> um, some lovely comments, Tom. Beverly Linney, got my book today, love it, so well set out. Ah, thanks Beverly. Oh, that's kind of you. Because I realised this morning when people started saying like, oh, they've arrived, that I had a whole new re reason to be nervous again. Like writing the thing <laughs> and printing it was one thing. But people actually having it was like a whole other kind of, oh, what if they don't like it? So thank you very much. Um, cool, so that's our, our colour. Now, because I was prepared, so we have got some leaves and some fillers that I made earlier and you can see how beautifully that colour is going to go together there. Um, so I will begin us making the rose. So one. Um, so 20 mil poly ball. It is a polystyrene ball that has been hot glued onto a cocktail stick. It is as simple as that. Um, the book and the tutorials that come with the Rapid Rose explain how to make those. And the last live that I did with Sugar and Crumbs, which you'll be able to find on their Facebook page or on YouTube, um, went through the different sizes of balls and different cutters and stuff. So if you need a hand with that, um, you can go and have a look there for it. Um, and I'm going to do this quickly, like we've all seen this before, I'm sure. So I, I will whiz through so that we can get to the fun bit. Um, starts off with a little cone of flower paste, like this. Um, I'm just going to wet the top of my ball with the water pen. Hang on, is any actually coming out? And then I'm going to just squidge that on top like so and this doesn't have to be super neat because it's all going to be hidden and you can see that all I've done there is just turned the little ball into a bud shape now the reason that I do it like this is simply so that when you get that little gap in the middle of your first petal it's looking onto the right colour um, so it just means that you've not if you, especially if you're doing a dark colour it's not kind of poking through onto white or whatever so I can put him down there for a second and we'll roll out the flower paste. And actually, I'm being a bit naughty. I should put that flower paste back in a bag because it dries very quickly. So you always want to keep it covered. But I do keep this in a bag. Um, right. So, tiny little bit of cornflour. 
just a weeny weeny bit just so that it's moving around and then you're gonna take the cutter press firmly and give it a wiggle the reason for moving it around is that if it moves it hasn't welded to the board and you're going to get a nice clean cut and then we'll just trim away the excess so that we've got a single petal now, quite often people at this point will say to me like oh do you cut them all into individual petals no -uh, it's just this first one we we'll get on for yes. lola just inquiring as to where she can get the book in the uk um, so you can get the book on the Sugar and Crumbs website or on my website, either way. Um, if you're just after the book, um, then either will do, but if you want other bits and pieces as well, then uh, go over to Carol's website because she sells all the things and you'll be able to kit yourself out beautifully for making sugar flowers. Um, is that stuff or I don't know? That was a cat attack. <laughs> I'm just going to own it. That's what that was, um, because they do so love to destroy carpets. Um, okay, so that was our first petal. Ball tool round the edge. See, look, I told you we're in my happy place, so I'm doing it without explaining. Ball tool, or the end of your rolling pin, either way. Um, and then I have just wet the bottom half there, and what we're going to do is put this first one on sideways. Now, the reason that I put it on sideways, and I do appreciate that that is not the traditional uh, way of doing it, this is that there is a much longer bit to wrap round, which means that it is dead easy to bring that pointy end in first, extra little spot of water if you need it, and then this side is going to come round there. Now, that is the hardest bit of the whole process. Honest to goodness, this is the bit that everybody always struggles with. Um, it gets easier from here, and that is the bit that takes a little bit of practice. The best thing I can tell you there is to just remember that you are the boss of the flower paste. Make it do what you want it to do. Pull it, stretch it, shape it, whatever it takes, because you are the boss of it. Um, so make sure that you've got that lovely little curl and that first bit nicely tucked in. Uh, although it can go in my dummy cake there. So that is our first step. And then we're going to take some more flower paste. should be enough I think. Well, it, there's nothing more annoying, yes it is, than when you've rolled it out and you're just like a smidgen too short. Okay so we've done that and again tiny bit of corn flour on the back and it really does just need to be a tiny bit. You don't want your whole work board and flour paste swimming in it. And then again press firmly, give it a wiggle. You can also, this is true with any cutter, if you rub your palm over the back of it, pushes the paste in and again you're going to get a nice clean cut. Pop it onto your foam pad and again we're going to go around the edges like this. And like I said, end of your rolling pin if you've got a round, rounded end or indeed you can do it with a ball tool. Like so. And what we're after, and I always say this, uh, and for some reason everybody always laughs. You don't want to make it too frilly, you just want a nice soft undulation. <laughs> I'm laughing. I don't know why everyone laughs at the word undulation. It's a good word. <laughs> so yeah, nice soft wave, as opposed to making it frilly. Because if you make it too frilly, then it's going to go off and do its own thing. Um, this is where this comes in. This is the Rapid Grow support pad. Uh, this is my, my weird little green baby. Um, and this is the thing that started off this whole malarkey that has resulted in me writing a book, which like I said, it blows my tiny mind that that's where we've reached. Um, so petals go upside down on there, trusty old water pen again, and you're just wetting the centre and doing a little line up the edge of each petal, like so. And then you're going to take your rosebud, pop it through the paste, through the hole in the middle, and as you can see, what it's doing is it's holding the petals up, so then you can arrange them. We will start with one and attach just the one side of it. Spin that round and attach the opposite petal. So we sort of got wings there. And then close them in. 
so that you've got your first row. And because it's flower paste and it's nice and stretchy and malleable, you can just curl those edges back a little bit. If you need to go in with a pokey tool, uh, this one's my favourite, so it's like the blunt end of your Dresden tool. You can just loosen them up a little if you need to. And then we'll do the same with these three. Again, attaching that one side. Uh, make sure that you attach them equally spaced. So if you've got to pull one or the other round a little bit, that's fine. And then you're just closing those open sides down on top. And then we'll take it off, flip it over, and press the base down. And the thing is that that, that there, with the ball inside, that's where your strength is. So you can press that nice and firmly. And then again, just shape and curl the petals just a little bit there. Like so, uh, and the old pokey tool if you need to. Right. I think we're still having a lot of issues mm -hmm. again with the picture quality. So sorry everybody. This is the first time we've done it like this. Do you want to, do you think it would be worth restarting? I'm not sure at this point. Is Carol with us? Does Carol think it would be worth restarting? Because she knows more about all of this than we do. Um, so yeah, apologies everyone. Um, yeah. I don't know, well. Oh, I'm really gutted. Yeah, I know, we are, it's, yeah, we are really gutted. If this gets too bad, it will be going up on the, the Facebook page and, and, YouTube, yeah. and on YouTube. So if you can't follow this now, again, we're really sorry. Stay with us because, yeah, we could look at restarting the feed. What do we think? We could do that. Um, some suggestions of maybe trying another phone. People are still being very positive about it, definitely. Yeah, definitely no, thanks, guys. Really um, grateful. It's a little bit hit and miss, but still some good stuff on, on both feeds. Um, <laughs> if in doubt. Um, back in five. Should we do that? Okay guys, we will be back in not even five minutes. Keep your hand on you. Don't keep your hand on you, my goodness me. <laughs> keep your phone on you, keep Facebook open. We're just going to restart the phone and hopefully we're going to come back with a much, much clearer picture. So give us two minutes, if that. You live again? Yeah. Okay. Has anyone come back? I hope so. I'm going to chit chat just for a second in the hopes that they do. And just to be completely sure, we're definitely on sugar and crumbs, right? <laughs> we're assuming. Yeah. Just checking. Oh, we're... Come back to us, people. Come back to us. We apologise. We are yes, so sorry. Sugar and Hooray. Fantastic. Sorry, okay. guys. I am so sorry. We have had no end of technical difficulties. So we are back. We are going to finish that rose there. Um, I've re needed my flower paste because I hadn't put it in a bag. I was being naughty and therefore it's that. Um, another note we have had is zoom slower. Oh, sorry. So Chris will zoom slower. Um, how are we doing? Yeah, we're up to 68, they're climbing, they're climbing, oh, guys, don't worry. Thank you so much, I'm so sorry, this has just been... The patience of saints. The real patience of saints, and I can't thank you all enough. Right, where had we got to? Uh, we had got to our rosebud, like so. And I'm just going to pop that there, and then I'm going to roll out another one. Um, I'm also going to have a quick word with an assistant. Sophie, you yes. can share that onto Immaculate Confections. I can't, can I? <laughs> this can. is good news. You do it. Do what? You want to give me some assistance? Honestly, yeah. guys, like, yeah. I, this, this, we, I, I am never doing this again. Laura, Maria, Carol, all of you, I'm missing you so much right now. <laughs> you have no idea. And to our lovely, lovely audience, I have only thanks and gratitude for your patience. Um, right, we've rolled out again. Little bit of corn flour, flipping it over. Press firmly and give it a wiggle. 
uh, technical term, and I feel like I can say it's a technical term Probably because that is now published in a book. <laughs> Give it a wiggle. <laughs> so, we'll pop that out on our foam pad again. And like we said before, either ball tool or the end of your rolling pin. Either will work. I just like the end of my rolling pin. It's one of those little quirky habits that I've developed. Like so. Um, this one's slightly different because we're just going to curl those edges back first. Like that. And you can see, uh, because of what we've done with the ball tool, it, like, it's super easy to do. There's none of this with a cocktail stick or anything else. You can just do it with your fingers. And it's just mm -hmm. giving it that little bit of shape and sort of dynamic movement and everything. Um, we'll turn it upside down again onto your rapid rose pad. Wet the centre and do that little line up each edge. Maureen Simpson has asked, where can we get that pink pad? Um, so these are on my website, but I believe that Carol uh, was going to take some stock as well. So keep an eye out with, on the Sugar and Crumbs website, guys, because they will be there very soon. Um, so we'll pop that through the middle. And then we're going to do like we did before, of just uh, attaching that one side. We will immediately put the next one, and then Bring this a little bit closer to the camera. open side comes in on top. So again, that one goes just inside, mm -hmm. then that one goes there, and again just inside, and this comes on top, and again just inside, that one on top, and then that one sits there like that. And as you can see, that makes us our rose. Over 240 viewers at the moment. Thank oh. you, everyone. Thank yeah. you. Coming back. I'm sorry. I'm Thanks. sorry you had to watch my sweaty face at the beginning as well. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to add one more row of petals. Now, uh, traditionally, you'd have seven petals because you increase by two each time. But they look almost just as nice with five petals. And for sake of speed, that's what I'm going to do now. Just going to interject mm -hmm. slightly. For the people um, saying that you can't get it in widescreen, we, sadly, do not have as a professional setup as the guys at Sugar and Crumb. So we are doing this off our mobiles. Uh, that was part of the problem of seeing my sweaty face at the very beginning of this evening's live. Um, but yeah, so we're just having to do it off mobile phones. I am sorry. We are getting there. We are evolving, but we have not evolved. Again, Carol, Laura, Maria, I miss you. <laughs> right, so this will be our last one. Again, pop it onto your foam pad, ball tool or the end of your rolling pin. And you are just mm -hmm. going to go around the edges like so. And like we did before, just curl them back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where you've got to be, you've got to know your flower paste and you've got to know your environment and your hands. Um, if it's very damp or if it's very humid, then you would want to do this bit and then just leave it for a little while to set. So maybe just like five minutes just so that it can go a bit solid um, and set up a bit. It depends, like I said, the environment, your hands. If you've got very warm hands, then you will make the flower paste stickier rather than not. Um, I like it, I tend to have pretty chilly hands, so it's not so bad. Um, but again, this is where just practice and experience and stuff comes into it. So that one's going to go upside down. Going to pop a little bit of water on the back, in the centre, and again, that line up each edge. Lovely comment from Lynn. It's fine, Chris, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> At least so I think so. Uh, thanks guys. <laughs> right, so through the middle. If you're doing two fives, you want your petals to sit on the sort of crossover of the previous two. So we'll start that one there. And again, just inside and that goes on top. That one goes just inside and that goes on top. Just inside and that one goes on top just inside again that one goes on top and then if you've done it right your very last one goes on top of your very first one you can turn it over press down the base because that's where your strength is and there you've got your rose so as you can see dead quick 
Um, there's all of that and, and more in the book. Uh, the Rapid Rose Bundle comes with a, a little tutorial as well to get you started. And you'll find those on um, Sugar and Crumbs. They've got a lovely rose and peony bundle. So it's got all the equipment that you need to do the roses and the peonies. So I'm just going to pop that there for a second. Um, so that was our rose. I said we'd just do a quick one. Um, because I know we've, we've seen it before. Which means now we get to do the fun bit. Uh, can anybody guess what the fun bit is? I would imagine you can, because uh, I haven't had a cigarette for a while, so I don't. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. What's the fun bit? Tell me what the fun bit is. It's the petal dust. There you go. Right. So this is the bit that uh, the definitely the fun bit because it is always your petal dust that are going to bring everything to life. So if any of you guys have seen me demo or do a live before, then you will know that this is the bit that I am completely obsessed with and enjoy the absolute most. So I'm going to start off with just a little bit of uh, sugar player, sugar player, sugar player plum, just for a change. The magic pink, the favourite pink, if you will. Um, nice wide brush. And... We're going to do our filler flowers. Now these are wonderful little filler flowers. It's all in the book, which you can get on the Sugar and Crumbs website. And we're just going to put a little bit of dust on our brush. And then, oh, we're going to break that one. <laughs> <laughs> these things happen, look, you can't even tell though. This is why these things are amazing. And you can see, it's just those little flicky motions all over. And what that does is it just catches the edge of the petals with that more intense colour, like so. And it blends it, and hopefully you can see between that one and that one... Holding it a little bit closer to the camera. ...the difference that it makes having the petal dust on there. So these things really do bring, the, bring your work to life. And again, there's plenty about petal dusts on, in the book that explains how to use them. Um, so I'm just going to whack a little bit more on one of these, like that, and see if there's, uh, some of these are dusted and some of them aren't. Right. So another Natalie has asked, what's the best brush to use? Um, so I quite like using um, makeup brushes for things like this. There's something wide and soft, because the way that... Um, what, I mean, what I like to do with petal dust is to go for a colour wash. So rather than something too fine and detailed where you're painting, sort of painting the colour on specifically, you can see it's just those sort of broad brush strokes that catch the uh, different, what am I trying to say? Catch the edges of the petals and the kind of the peaks and the troughs of your flowers and stuff. How long have those bits been left to dry? God, ages. <laughs> um, so you, you would want to leave things overnight so that they're nice and dry before you dust them before you dust them yeah these ones as it happens so these are bits and bobs that um actually they, they are bits and bobs that are in the book like ones that i actually made for the, uh, book. For the book so and where can you get that book ages you can find the book either on my website or indeed on the sugar and crumbs website so there's arrived when did the sugar and crumbs of it they, they arrived today. They got them today, so yeah, they will. People, folk that have already ordered, they will be winging their way to you already. Um, um, some nice comments from Maureen. Love the work, and she's definitely buying the book. So ah, that's a positive. Thank you, guys. Well. That's lovely. Um, right, so that was those. I've got. Here we go. I'm doing it. Here's some I made earlier. Um, and again, guys, all of this is in the book. All these different bits and pieces. Quick question for a couple of people that missed it at the beginning. What yeah. flower paste do you use? Um, I tend to use Squires, um, which is this stuff. Um, Squires Kitchen Flower Paste. You'll be able to find it on the website. Um, there are lots of other flower pastes available, so try a few. Go for the one that's your favourite. This is what I learnt with, so it's sort of a habit as much as it is a preference, if you know what I mean. There's, there's plenty around. You just want flower paste as opposed to modelling paste. Uh, simply because modelling paste is for models, as the title suggests. Flower paste, and this is going to sound so dumb, but it's flower as in like flowers, not flower as in wheat, um, is for making flowers. So yeah, as long as it's flower paste, you will be onto a winner um, for doing your flowers and stuff. Um, so yeah, where were we? Where were we? 
I've got those, I've got those. Okay, so I've got some buds that I made earlier. Um, like so. And a few more leaves. And we're going to do some green. So. Any tips for cleaning the dusting brushes? Yes, corn flour is the trick. Um, if you want to clean them off, make a little cup of corn flour. Um, there's one just over here, actually. Look. You can see I've been cleaning <laughs> purple brushes. Um, but yeah, just corn flour and just swoosh the brush in it and you will see the colour come off the brush onto the corn flour. Um, I don't know why it works, but it does work. Uh, it works brilliantly and all you've got to do is just be careful that you um, get the corn flour off before you use your next colour. So you will find the, co the colour will be gone and you can use the brush for a different colour uh, but it will still stain the bristles but don't worry about that because all you have to do is just wipe it on a bit of kitchen paper or whatever and you can see soon enough whether or not you've still got colour left on there. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to do a little bit of green. Right. Uh, Dory Frost asks, when you use squires do you warm it up? I struggle with my hands and I need my paste quite soft. Um, yes, you can do. So you, you can pop it in the microwave. If you do that, put your microwave on like 40 or 50% and do it five seconds at a time. It, it's incredible. If you've only got a little lump of paste in there, it will so very quickly um, warm itself up. Overheat. Overheat. Is that an owl? I think that's an owl. There's been a few comments. It's uh, like people national, are liking the bird. People like, are people liking, are the, liking bird. the bird. National <laughs> Lampoon does Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, just mind when you heat it up, What? because if, if you do it for too long, what happens is that you pull your chunk of flour paste out and it seems warm, you squash it, the inside will be like molten lava, and I've done it before, like you can easily <laughs> burn your palm. Um, so yeah, just 40-50%, 5 mm -hmm. seconds at a time, and just be careful, but yes, that does work. Mm -hmm. um, or indeed, try some other brands, some of them are softer. Again, they're all different, like with fondant, all the different brands are are different um, so experiment with a few and you can always mix two together if you wanted to so if you found one that was a bit softer but perhaps softer than what you're used to mix that in with your squires and you could arrive at a happy medium that's going to work for you and your hands um, yeah it's 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 different different things um, right okay we're going to do some green so I've got some leaves here here are some I made earlier like sort of blue peter extraordinaire and I'm just gonna take a little bit of that bright dust with my smaller brush and just go all over as you can see to just brighten and lighten it up a little bit. Like so. Hang on, let me get in there. Let me get in there. Oh. God, they're fiddly little signs those, aren't they? Right, so that's just a little bit of all over green. How are we doing time wise? The time is 20 past nine. Okay. Oh, what was that? Casualty. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Nil disparandum. We will power through. <laughs> right, so a little bit of darker green just on the base there. And I will grab an even darker green. For heaven's sake, where have you gone? That do. So this one, this is moss green, but again, play with your colours. If it's not the exact same one, it doesn't matter. It's just about getting toning colours and having your sort of light and dark and, and so on and so forth. Right. So we're darkening up the bases and like you know you can take more time care and attention doing this because I'm doing this at super speed <laughs> super speed right once you've done it just just bring those into the camera a bit closer okay so that you can see you've got that sort of nice bright tip there and then that darker green just on the base to darken them up and the reason we do it like that so when you've taped them all together, like this one here, do you see how the colour spreads up and out? And they just like, they're so cool. I love these. 
um, and they're a wonderful thing to have in your design. Because they're all wired, you can bend them and shape them and get them in the right places and stuff. So they're just, they're really, really cool. Um, we still need to dust our rose, but I'm going to leave that till the end just so that he's got a little while to dry. What are you trying to find? I am just grabbing some floral tape and my little cutter up. So just some green floral tape so that I can make our little leaves into a branch. And this, it is a gem ribbon cutter is what it's called, which again, Show us the inside of that. you can find on the website. So these are terrifying. <laughs> Them be razor blades, <laughs> um, like actual full on double sided actual razor blades. Yeah. And they frighten me a little bit. And I don't know if uh, Wendy, she is a regular sugar and crumb beer. Crumbser. She is watching. Um, Oh, I still see, like, I get the shivers every time I even think about that. Poor old Wendy was trying to use a thing and cut her thumb open and it just completely freaked me out because I'm terrified of this and I know I'm clumsy, so I'm always super careful. Um, one question that's coming through is, well, what, what size wire is, what, what size wire are you using? Um, they're 28s, so just nice little skinny ones. Um, and again, all of this is in the book, which you will find on the website. Oh, goodness me, look. Right. So, we are going to start with our littlest leaf there. Ooh, which leaf cutter are you using? This one, it is the FMM Foliage All Sorts, is what I have used to make these. Um, which, again, is on the website. I think later on I shall have to email Maria, the mother of all uh, wish lists which you will of course find in the usual place. This is all, as you can see, a little bit ad hoc. So what I've done, attach the tape. You want it sort of an inch down from your littlest leaf. Take your next one, pop a little bend in it, put it alongside and wrap the tape round. So now the two leaves are attached. And that is the principle really of taping anything together. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> Definitions by Natalie. <laughs> right, so we've done that. I've wound the tape down a bit. Next leaf, bend in the opposite way. And again, you're just going to wrap it round. Like so, and bring the tape down. And of course, you could do them next to each other or whatever you fancied. I always like things to be a little bit off centre. So I tend to make things intentionally a bit skew with. I think they look more interesting. We'll take one more. Caroline Thoburn. Apologies if I butchered your name. I struggle to get the wire in the leaf as the flower face has to be thin. There's a, there's a few ways you can deal with that. So you can either roll the one side of your flower paste a little bit thicker, which is how I tend to do it. Um, and again, apologies for another plug, it's in the book, you can buy it on the website. Um, or you can use a grooved board, which is a work board that has uh, got sort of grooves cut into the back of it, so that when you roll your paste out, you get a ridge down the side, or down the back of it, so that you specifically say that you've got space to put um, a little wire in. Okay, and then we've got one more little leafy going in here. We will twirl that tape down like so, and I'm just going to put, you know what, I'm going to abandon the one that I broke. There's always some that you break, but it always makes spares. Right, and just attach in that last one like that, and just bring the tape all the way down to the end of the wires. There we've got our little leafy branch. And these are, they just make excellent sticky up bits or sort of swoopy down bits. And again, because they're all on wires, you can bend and shape it however you like. Would you colour the back of a leaf? Um, for sort of normal everyday commercial work, I tend not to bother colouring the backs because in truth, nobody's looking. If you're doing competition stuff, then by all means do it. But for like normal things, no one's looking. 
um, you know, if you're doing a wedding cake or a birthday cake or something, nobody's going to, to, to the, the wedding reception or to the event, whatever it is, and, you know, examining the back of the leaves. So, yeah, commercially, don't bother. Competition terms, it's worth doing it because the judges do look, you know, that's their job. Um, so, yeah, and then what else have we got? There's some little berries. Here they are. Just a few little berries. Now, these... easiest thing in the world to take together these I like to make them into little clumps of just three or four or two or five whatever you fancy just wipe the tape on and that is purely and simply so that you've got them in sort of a little unit that's ready to use and ready to pop onto your cake so I'll do one more here with just two of them actually no, there'll be more than one more than these hang on Linda Donnelly brings up a good point that in nature, the back of the leaf is usually paler, so... Ah, Linda, you are my new favourite person. <laughs> oh goodness, I am totally stealing that. I am absolutely having that. Um, yeah, that's very true. That is very true. And they are. I've never thought of that. <laughs> um, yes, indeed. Right, so yeah, you can see. It's just about creating, and what we've got here is just little sort of sprigs, units, items that are ready to go on the cake because that will make it easier when we come to arrange them. So our last thing now, just quickly, is we are going to uh, dust this wee rose we've made. Now, I don't want to overdo it because, and you can all say it with me, you can always add more colour but you can't take it away. So I'm just going to go for a bit of paler pink and a bit of sort of this peachy colour here. Uh, Maureen, who I believe has bought a book, is asking how you would go about making those berries. Um, again, in, in the book. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of that in, in the book. Um, it, it's a ball on a wire. There's, there's not a great deal of um, uh, difficulty with the berries. And they're one of the, you know, they're sat in front of the TV or with Netflix on kind of job. You can make loads and loads of them and, and put them aside. Um, because you never know. There's nothing worse than you sort of nearly finished a project and you just want one more berry, one more leaf. So if you ever got spares, keep them because they'll come in useful. Um, right. So I just mixed a bit of my darker pink in with that sort of peach and pale pink there. Because again, we can always add more, but we can't take it away. And I'm back to my fat brush, just going from the outside in. Are those foliage all sorts on sugar and crumbs? I believe they are. Yeah. Leaf cutters. Yeah. 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 Yes, the FMM foliage all sorts, guys, that I've used for those ones there. So, yeah, we need a little bit more colour here. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be able to hear it, but you might be able to hear our neighbour calling her cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, outside in, and it's just those gentle little flicking motions so that you are blending the colour as you put it on. And if you always go from the outside in, if you misfire with the brush, the worst thing you're going to do is catch the next petal inside. Whereas if you do it this way round, you run the risk of hitting sort of a spot that you don't want to. And again, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Someone want to shut the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. And that one. See, Cat's yeah. name is Cody. Because <laughs> I was hot, because I was nervous. I was running hot for once. I'm usually cold, so we'd, we'd open them. I'm, I'm, again, we're learning lots. What can they I say? They appear to be enjoying we're, it. We're, we're learning lots and lots. Right. So, can you guys see how that has transformed our little rose there, having that pink on there? And in fact, what I'm going to do is pop it that way up. So that was the colour that we started with. And then, with those pink dusts, it just, like, it, it really does transform them. They look amazing. 
Everything looks awesome with petal dust. You should go buy lots because they're fantastic. And so, then Sarah Miles Russell says, uh, uh, "I don't think Cody wants to go in." No, I don't think he does. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So, okay, I'm going to call it quits on on dusting that, and I'm going to put this out of the way because uh-huh. the way I'm going, I'm going to fall into it or something. <laughs> I'm sure. Right. I think Cody's got more comments than I have. <laughs> Cody is getting a lot of love right now. <laughs> Do you know what the, the window shuts like? The worst thing is, Cody is a mean cat. He's nice. He's wonderful, but he's mean. Um, right. Imagine that this was covered in sugar paste and it was perfect and everything, Imagine. right? That's a different bit. Um, we've got that. And we've got our little sketch. This is where the sketch is going to become super important because it's going to guide us placing the flowers on the cake. Um, I always draw everything, and to be honest, I always draw everything for my customers as well. Uh, it means that you have you've dealt with all the design issues. So when you come to make the cake, make the picture. If at the end of it the cake looks like the picture, you can pat yourself on the back knowing you've done your job and the people that you've made it for ought to be happy. So I always, always, always sketch everything. The amount of times I've said that to you before. She calls me into the kitchen. Is this right? Will this do? Does it look like the picture, Natalie? Yes. Then it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Long-suffering, that man. Um. (laughs) Okay. First things first, we're going to start with our biggest flower. So I am going to pop the rose in. And the beauty of making the roses on a cocktail stick is that you can stick them straight in the cake. Um, Tina asks, if I cover my husband in petal dust, will it make him look better? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. No comment. (laughs) Oh, good Lord, right. So start with your rose. Now, the one caveat that I'm going to put here, this is always easier on a real cake, right? Trying to get blooming posy picks into, um, what is this? Polystyrene. Polystyrene. is really tough. So I'm going to look like I'm making a whole ton of effort here, when in actual fact, if you do this on a real cake, it's much, much easier. So I'm just going to squeeze it round for a second so that I can see it. Okay. Now. According to our sketch, we want some bits coming up here, which in real life is sort of there-ish. So I'm going to push that posy pick in there. You can see it takes a bit of effort because of the polystyrene. And then you want to put just a little bit of something like some flower paste or some fondant in the posy pick because that's going to help hold all your wires in place. So let me just... Because again, didn't put the flower paste in a bag, so that's kind of got a bit rock hard. Let's warm it up quickly. Where would you get such sagely advice as to where to put your flower paste? <laughs> you it's going to ignore me. I am. Yeah, I've, I've lost it. Right. So again, little sketch. We've got a bit sticking up here. Now, I think that that wire is a bit long, so we can just snip that off there. And... Pop him in like that. And then we've got, we want some of our really bright green and some of our white. So we've got all of our berries. So I'm just going to, you could take these together, but I'm just going to, for quick, I'm just going to twist them together there. Like that. One second, guys, and they can just go and sit in there. What are posy picks, Natalie? Um, posy picks, so they're like sort of test tube shaped, little plastic things. Probably closer to the camera. So you're just going to put that in the cake, you then put your wired things in the posy pick, and that's simply so that you're not putting wires straight into the cake, because wires aren't food safe, so you always want to protect them with something, and, and posy picks are the things to do. Again, search it on the website and you will find them uh, in a few different sizes. So we've got that starting there. And this is the bit, now that it's coming together, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, the colours are going to work. I can feel relieved about these colours now. Thank the Lord. Because if all that the rest of it might have gone to pot, at least the colour in the cake making is okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. So we've got a little filler flower. 
And Carol has already put those posy pics on the wish list. Oh, fantastic. See, look, we've got you covered. We've got you covered, right? I'm just popping one more in here. And this one, I want to sit just down here. Ooh. There we go. So you can see we're building up that side of it. Now, we also want some bits to go down there. So I'm going to go for, and there's a few in these in the book, a trusty blob of fondant. Or in this case, flower paste, because it's what I had to hand. What's flower paste in German, Natalie? Oh, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, uh, so last weekend, was it last weekend? I've lost all track. But, no, oh, I don't know, the one before. before. I don't know. We went to the Cake and Bake Show in Germany, and we had lots of fun with our uh, European friends. Um, Carol and John were there from Sugar and Crumbs and all the girls. And I think they, we, we all had a successful weekend. Um, the only issue I had is that I don't speak German. <laughs> um, and uh, fewer people than we were expecting uh, spoke English, which is a bit of an English thing to say, but anyhow. So I, learned, I can now say about 10, we, 10, 10 words in German. Um, four of them are not fit for polite society. The rest of them are only useful at a cake show. So as long as I am in that very, very niche uh, situation, we're good. Um, so yeah, flour paste in German is Blumenpasta. Um, so we learned that which was fun. Talking of shows actually, if anybody's sort of down South Coast way, the um, British Sugar Craft Guild Region 3, I want to say, um, their show is in Brighton on Saturday. And if you search online for that, you'll be able to find it. Um, and we're going, because we do like a cake show, don't we, Christopher? Yes. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, we did. It was Sue, Sue Bosworth has asked, does the book show us how to make pink filler flowers that you have just put in? Sure does, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it does, yeah. Um, right, hang on, I've got to have a little look. Right, so yes, that's our thing. What I've done there, you can see, stick a blob of fondant on your cake, and then you can poke things into the fondant, and that, I find, is one of the easiest ways to attach I'll things. Spin that around. That sort of oh, sideways-ish. Like um, if this was covered with sugar paste, use the same sugar paste so it's the same colour and then it's virtually in invisible but I've used the flower paste there. Um, I want to pop a filler in there so I've cut that nice and short so that he can just sit alongside there and I think we want a few more uh, buds and berries bits because I do like me a bud and berry. Are you going to the NEC show Matt? Uh, yes we will be in November which will be here soon enough I'm sure. Um, yes, no, we'll, we'll be there at Cake International. Right? I just want these to sit just a little touch lower, like that. How are we doing? And then, like, so there's a little gap here, so I'm going to pop another filler in. Oh, sh sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and crumbs. <laughs> Nearly. Right. This really is, this is, this is an ill-fated escapade. <laughs> right. So yeah, little gap there, so we can do it. And this is, so folk up and ask, like, how do you arrange flowers? A lot of it is like, oh, this bit here, does it look right? Hmm, yes it does, no it doesn't. It's, it's an awful lot of trial and error. And I think we'd wanted some bigger leaves, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, so these ones that I'm using now are peony leaves, which, again, those are in the book. And I'm gonna go, because they're a bit bigger, I'm gonna go for another posy pitch just there. There's my pokey tool, because now my berries are affected. There we are. So we can stick those in there. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's, not, Chris, it's not funny. It's not even funny anymore, honestly. Right. It happens to everybody. Oh, it does. So, what, so these ones, they're sitting a little bit high for my liking. So I'm just snipping the bottom off the wire because that means that it will sit a little bit lower in the posy pick there, just like that. Right, okay, so do you see how you've got the pink and that sort of coral contrasting with the greens? We've got two or three tones of green there. 
the pink and the coral sort of match together and you're starting to build up a design and a colour palette that looks really cool. Um, we want a few bigger leaves down here, like so. Hang on. Emma says, I'm so glad that happens to you too. <laughs> there goes another leaf there. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Right, so we've got a little bit of that there, and I think we could also do with maybe a bit of our brighter green colour. So again, we're just going to snip that off there. And that, it's still, we're still going into that same blob of fondant. If you, if you find that your blob's getting a bit full, you can make a new one. Um, I don't know, does that, is that a euphemism for what? I don't know, but it sounds like it should be. Anyway, um, and we just want couple more fillers mm -hmm. to just sit under there to finish off. Come on. Please don't break again. Like so. Mm. Hang on, I just need to look at this for a second guys. Um, are we going to Scotland at any point? Oh yeah, we're going to Scotland too. We are. Who's asked that? Is, is someone asking or they reminding me to say? You're reminding me to say thank you. Yes, in June, 15th of June, which will be the Region 1 uh, British Sugar Craft Guild exhibition. And we're really looking forward to it because we love Scotland. It is the best place. And um, we're turning it, we're, we're staying for a holiday afterwards, in fact. Uh, in fact, my entire family is, is coming to join us to stay for a holiday. Um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, the first time we went was um, after I'd filmed with Paul Bradford a couple of years ago the first time I think and like oh, it's awesome, amazing, love it. So yes, we will be in Scotland in June. Um, right, now I think we are almost done but I just want to add one final filler and because I'm insisting on adding a final filler this is probably where the whole thing is likely to collapse and there's going to be calamity and I will shame myself entirely more than has already happened this evening. Hang on, come on you, just one more. Oh no, see look I told you it would all fall apart. Right, I'm not going to touch it anymore. How does it look? Oh no. <laughs> Seriously guys, today is not my day. It's been a long day. At all. <laughs> right. It's been a very long day. I'm going to go for a new blob of fondant. If nothing else, let's teach this as, a, at least use this as a, as a learning experience that sometimes these things can take just a little bit of persuasion. So because those leaves are quite big and quite heavy, they are going to require their own little blobette of fondant, which I'm squidging on there. I'm just going to reinsert those leaves just there. And now, before it goes completely awful, I'm just going to stop touching it. So, that was a very quick run around, taping some bits and pieces together, arranging them on a cake. Um, there's no big mystery to it, it it's, a, it's a bit of a have a go and see what happens. Um, as always, practice is everything. Um, always useful to have that little sketch, and I think, like, it's reasonably the same. I think I can go to sleep tonight knowing that if nothing else, I managed to pull off a half decent uh, little cake with the sketch there. Um, so yes, I hope you like it. I'm gonna round off with the fact that, so all of these things, they're all in the book, um, which you can get on the Sugar and Crumbs website or on our website. Um, one last look at it, it's here. Um, I've made it through tonight without crying, so that's... Um, which is quite yay. impressive. <laughs> Um, needless to say, I am super grateful to everybody that has bought a copy. Can't believe it. Totally overwhelmed. Um, yeah, it's been quite quite the journey. Um, super grateful to Carol as well for all her support over the last couple of years. And again, everybody, my apologies that we've had the technical difficulties that we have tonight. Uh, if anybody has got any burning questions, now's your last chance to ask them. Um, so I can't remember. I, I, sorry, but somebody asked where did we, where did you get the uh, drawers from? Oh, that's my idea. <laughs> no, not the first time. The the drawers. The, this my little kitcheny bit. 
Um, it's all from Ikea, cheap and cheerful, and we installed it ourselves with my dad, bless him, came and helped us. Um, yeah, they're just 800 mil drawers, they're amazing, you can fit all the stuff in them. Um, so no, they are, they're good drawers. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, thank you for being patient and bearing with us the problems that we have had this evening. And um, I really hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, the book is here. <laughs> Thank you very much guys and we will see you again soon. Next time I will be in Stockport at the Sugar Crumbs Kitchen with a slightly better technical situation. <laughs> see you again guys, bye bye.